what his home was. Okay. My question is to you about the USGS study. Okay. Okay. Um, we know that your prospective date of perhaps grouting and repairing this tunneling mm -hmm. is going to be at least 10 years <coughs> from now. Are you going to, is that safe to say that? 10 years before? We're going to dewater a tunnel. Uh, you know, right now, I mean, the schedule has changed a little bit. Any capital project we have, uh, once we get deeper into design, and I mentioned the shafts were at 90% of design, once we get deeper into design, we have a better sense of where, um, you know, a more precise di dates uh, in mind. So we're at Dewater Tunnel, I think it's October 2020. Okay, so the worsening part of this leak is going to be happening after the Rosen Bypass, right? correct? No, about the same time. Okay, so in that time period, are you going to continue to maintain USGS's presence here on the ground to monitor what's going on? I mean, we're, we're hoping that some of the people that flood really bad, that need to leave, that want to leave, will be able to leave. But you're still going to have people here. You're still going to have a leak. You're still going to have an environmental hazard going on every day. Are you going to continue to keep them on to monitor uh, the the goings on with the you know the, the monitors and the drilled wells, are you going to expand <coughs> your um, your area of interest where you know your leak is still leaking and will be leaking for another ten years and is going to increase? Are you going to allow them maybe to you know widen the boundaries or you know? Let me. I, I'm going to turn to Ira and Paul to, but let me just say a few for the details about that, but. Let me just say that, you know, the study, the USGS study, will certainly um, speak to the linkages that they know of now. It, it is common in other USGS studies to identify areas of future interest. And so when we get that study, we'll certainly be responding to that. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if they have a, a research agenda packed in there. And we, we have longstanding relationships with USGS. But that, that's correct, Carter. The USGS has identified further study needs in the Woolworths area, and it's certainly in our interest to monitor the conditions in the tunnel going forward until we act, do the ultimate repair. So monitoring certainly makes sense from DEP's perspective and transmitting water to, to the city, and certainly you know, we understand the community concerns about continued leakage until the repair is finally done. All right, because so the longer that we wait for this repair, the more the earth is being compromised. Well, defining and monitoring it is going to be important and, you know, it's going to be guided by the results of this study that's, com that's coming out. And USGS has had contact with us already concerning additional work that's needed. We do have a four-year contract with USGS. We have the ability to go directly into additional work right now. And um, how we do that is going to be informed by the report and, our dis and whatever new information is gained from the studies that we have done and will be doing. Why don't you stay up here? Because Paul, Paul's uh, unlike me. Paul's an engineer, and uh, and also has direct oversight of this program. So he, you know, I think some of the questions we're going to get him be more you know, relevant to you. And did you have follow up? Be well, because you know, just in the short three and a half years that we, you know, started this yeah. PAC committee in 2008 until this present day, we have another two dozen homeowners that are affected, and not because you know they want to wave the flag and be included in whatever buyout. But it's clear that you can see water is moving in in areas where, you know, it's least resistant. Well, I, look, I think the USGS study is going to give us a basis to, to have those kind of discussions. So we've already put in, uh, you know, match you know, three point seven. We put in three point seven million in our uh, money. Uh, we're going to reassess it depending on what that comes in. We do hope, by the way, that 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 funding and the buyouts that you know the you know more obvious or, or acknowledged uh, affected homes are going to address a lot of the problems because, uh, you know, some folks uh, uh, who are affected uh, are no longer going to be affected. You know. so. uh, one of my concerns with the Santa Cruz larger is the, uh, the amount of water that's in the reservoir at the present time. It's probably right now at 96%. Yeah, 
I will say this though, we have had some uh, very good experiences in uh, with uh, our new operational tools in uh, Cannonsville uh, Reservoir, and you know we are better able to now predict uh, the weather and the uh, rainfall, uh, where our reservoir levels are going to be, and to manage those. So we, I think we've been working uh, very well with DRDC, first of all, and also with the state to get some more uh, flexible uh, management uh, protocols in place so that we can uh, you know, balance those water needs. Mostly Paul's going to. We spoke a little, a little bit about this in, in the past, Glenn, and um, the elevation around out right now today is it's about 97.5% full. Um, there is some void in the reservoir, and typically we operate around out reservoir near full, near full capacity. Um, that gives us the ability to put water down to New York City, and right now our best quality water and the only water that we have that doesn't require treatment is coming out of Rondout Reservoir. It has turbidity of 1.2. The Shoktan Reservoir water that we're diverting and treating with alum has a quality of about 40 NTU. Much, so our best quality water is, is in uh, Rondout. And you can see also in the release we made to the stream, it's clear here, you take a trip up to Kingston, it, look, it looks different. Um, at Rondout, the way we operate is we keep, it, we keep Rondout high so we can transmit water to New York City, plus to improve the quality of its terminal reservoir it allows for settling time. And unlike a show can, we have a much greater control over Rondout elevations through the diversions of water coming into the reservoir. The Rondout Reservoir watershed is about 92 square miles. Um, it has capacity of 50 billion gallons. Most of the water that goes into Rondout that's diverted to New York City comes from our diversions from Papacton and Cannonsville and Never Sink res Reservoirs. A Shokan Reservoir has an area, watershed area of about 250 square miles, a capacity of about 128 billion, billion gallons. We have, more con we have more control over Rondout because we can also take out over 800 million gallons a day to quickly lower it. And um, ahead of the storm at the end of August, Hurricane Irene, based on the weather service forecast that we had at that time, we did take steps to shut off the diversions into Rondout and to lower the elevation to capture the water that was predicted. And at the first of the week, it was, looked like we were going to get three to four inches of rain into Rondout Reservoir, which we had taken steps where we could absorb that. As everyone knows, that was not the case. We got a lot more rain. We got over a foot of rain in some spots. And um, the reservoir did absorb the first shot of water and atten attenuate flows downstream. And if you look what actually happened in the stream graphs, you had a peak flow, a high elevation coming out of Rondout. But that high elevation, the peak flows happened off phase to the flows that went through the valley. So if we had not taken those, those steps, the reservoir provides, some atten provides attenuation just the way it's set up. But by taking those steps, we were able to shift the phasing of the, of the peak flows off the phase of the peak flows downstream to reduce the amount, to reduce the amount of flooding that it would have occurred downstream in the absence of the reservoir. Um, the investments we're making with our modeling tool, OST, and um, we're going to be in the very new, new, near future announcing an agreement with the Weather Service where we're investing about a million dollars to improve the mo their modeling capability to feed into our operations. Um, that ability is going to improve, and we're going to operate the system with the objective you know, to deliver water to the 9 million people who use our system, but also to maximize the protections that we offer downstream. And um, that's part of our strategic plan, DEP strategic plan. It's been something that was set out by, by the commissioner, and you know, when, who's now the deputy mayor, originally put that out. So that's consistent with that, and we're going to operate in as much in a way that provides as much protection as we possibly can downstream and still meeting meeting our mission of delivering water to the city. Uh, yes? Thank you. Okay. Thanks for the reminder of name. Yeah? I have to say that that was a wonderful explanation, Paul, and I know that with your engineering background, it is very helpful. But one thing that's missing out of the equation is that when you put that water through that tunnel, we experience that in a negative manner. So attenuation is as positive as far as holding back that water for 
goes downstream until that natural rain comes down, and then it becomes negative attenuation because you put that water in the ground in our area, and then we have natural rain come down, so we are oversaturated. So before that, that storm hit, we had water coming up in our basement. Yep. So it's not a positive attenuation, it's a negative attenuation. Because if the, the reservoirs weren't as high as they were, we would not have had been inundated as bad as we were. I have to say, that's <coughs> what happens to us. Because when you put yourself in a position where you don't want to spill that reservoir, you're putting it through that tunnel, <coughs> and it is affecting us. Yeah, and it's destroying our lives. It really is. And just <coughs> having the, and I'm sorry, but I just interject. I hope I warned you about me. Um, a, flood buyout, a flood buyout is just not fair for us here in this valley because of this leak and aqueduct. You're, you're expecting us to leave with fair market value offer when some of us wouldn't even be able to fulfill our mortgages and then move with nothing. We have spent small fortunes, every single one of us that live in this area, and you'll see it when you drive through our neighborhood, how much water is actually in this area that we all manage <coughs> and pay for out of our pockets. Yeah, you did supply us with the sub pumps that you know we bought, we got reimbursed, whatever. Yes, you did reimburse us for you know the... Um, but uh, they didn't keep them very long. But we yeah. have to maintain, we have to manage, we pay for gas, we pay for electric, we're prisoners in our houses because we can't leave. We have flooded, as Julianne said, and we have proof that we get water before it even rains. We have video of water emanating out of the basement floors before the rain events. So it's... And it's understandable that you're in that position, but you have put yourselves in that position where you, I know that you have to, you have to juggle. You, you have to worry about downstream. You've got to worry about those down in the Delaware because if you put too much down, you're, you know, you're going to, but the tunnel is in the, the condition that it is because it was not maintained. And we have been the end result of that, you know, and we don't want to be that end result any longer so there has to be something that has to be done and uh, you know with DEP putting in that amount of money and matching funds and that 10% that 10% is not going to help accommodate what you think it's going to accommodate it's you know for what we have had to put out all these years for these increased utility bills and having that water in our basement and you have to you know you have to increase that thermostat because that you've been down, you've been in my basement. Let's just talk. You've been in there. You know how cold that water is. We all have that same thing. You have to put that thermostat up just so you can deal with how freezing cold it is on your first floor. So there's so many layers to this story that we're hoping you really understand because that 10% is insulting. Is is nothing to cover what we've lost. We, we didn't move here in a flood zone. We didn't know any of these things. This was so under the carpet, so to speak. Um, you know, everybody wants to be fair here. We really do. We're not asking you to pay us three times what our homes are worth, but we're, we're asking for fairness and to do the right thing. And we can't keep um, holding this burden to all of us. We just can't. We're financially, we just can't do it. Beyond emotionally and everything else, we can't. None okay. of us. Well, well, thanks for sharing that. I mean, you know, we, we, we understand that and you're making fair points. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we are, as I said, you know, we've got this first phase for the buyout program in place. USGS comes out. We're going to reassess where we are. At this point, I don't know. Len, do you want to be the MC here? Because I, I, uh, I'll go with this woman. I'll okay. just go work backwards. Andrew I don't want to, Smith. No unfairness to anybody. <laughs> Paul knows me from 1992, so okay. we go back a ways. There's the buyout program. I think is fantastic for those who intend and sure. want to get out of here. But you're going to have a block of people that are not leaving, myself included. Mm -hmm. 
Our problem is our wells are compromised, our septics are compromised, our properties are compromised. What is New York City willing to do for these people that are staying behind? Well, it, it, it's not very satisfying. I keep going back to the same answer. You know, I apologize, but you know, we are going to take very seriously the the results and, and you know predictions of that USGS study. So, you know, until that comes out, we're we're not in a position to. All right, you know, New York City it. has already admitted that the problems on my property was caused by your water. All right? I need a new septic. I have to do my laundry at the laundromat. We have to time our flushes on the toilet. Our showers are timed. We take what we call a military shower, that three minute thing. You know, you rinse down, you soap up, and you rinse down. Mm -hmm. It's not the way we should be living. Not this day and age. I need co concrete answers as to what's going to be done to the people that are left and what's going to be done for them. You know, I, again, I think it, you know, at this point, I'm, I don't know about your particular property, so I can, okay. I'm not in a position to speak to it, and maybe we'll just have to follow up with you later. Glenn, hold on, there's a lot of other people who's I want to address that question. Okay. Um, we had a conference call uh, with Ira, and what we're talking about uh, for people that are remaining in the Washington would be to form a, a Washington water district. Uh, as, as she said, the, the septics and the wells, when they were put in many, many years ago, are not, they wouldn't meet the regulations today. So what we're looking at shaft and eventually bring uh, uh, reservoir water down into a war scene. And that's something that uh, we would like to address and not for a full cost of what you charge other areas because of the problems that uh, people are having for the last 10 or 15 years. Mm -hmm. We feel that we should be able to get that water at a discount price. And that would solve the problem down the road for the remaining people that uh, <coughs> remain to stay in the area while you're repairing the tunnel. I think that's something I would appreciate you looking into. Okay. Um, and we could apply for some grants and work with DEP on, on getting them the water that supplies in New York City out of the tunnel. I mean, we, we have X amount of gallons leaking a day. To, I mean, we could actually drill down 700 feet and uh, if we had a place to store that water, we'd have plenty of water for everybody. But that's the main goal here. We have a Napanok Water District, a Fernhausen Water District, and we would like to create a Washington Water District by using your water. Okay. Okay, Lynn, I appreciate that you want to bring do that part of it. What I don't appreciate is the fact that our septics are messed up. I do my laundry at a laundromat when I've got a washer and dryer in my home. Come on. We need somebody to come in and put new septic systems in, in place that'll last for the next 10 years at least. You know what? I had a new septic put in two years after I moved into my house because the old one just crumbled into the yeah. ground because it was always saturated. Even putting in a new septic system is not going to solve the problem because the water table is always above normal. All right. So we need above so ground septic systems. Water table is always above it's gonna be where it should be, so it is challenging. This gentleman's been waiting for a long time, so. Uh, uh, Commissioner, you, when you, you mentioned the uh, the chemical stabilization yes. pilot study. You know, as a PAC member, I I know what that's about. But okay. I was hoping maybe Paul if he could just explain to the others in the audience today <laughs> what that is, because I'm not sure that everyone really knew about that. So a couple of years ago, we we gave uh, Syracuse University some money to study a way to perhaps fix the leaks in the, um, in the tunnel uh, using calcium carbonate, lime, like lime you put on your lawn, which is a common thing you find in water. It gives water its, its hardness. And uh, the work we did up at Syracuse University um, at the bench scale was very promising. It showed that adding lime to water 
could potentially fix and seal cracks in a tunnel very rapidly, more quicker than um, quicker than we even even thought. I mean, it happened very very quick, and um, it was promising, promising to the point where it made sense with experts taking a look at it to advance that to the next phase to see if it could perhaps be applied to the Rondout West Branch Tunnel as a way to stop leakage near term and perhaps as a way to maintain the tunnel going forward after we, after we do the repair <laughs> to ensure that we don't have problems again in the future since the water that comes out of the Catskills that comes out of Rondout is very, very soft water. That was one of the, one of the reasons why the city came up to this part of the Catskills um, to begin with was to get the soft water that was then put into steamships back in back in those days It was so low in calcium that it would not it would not uh, cause build up to scale on steamships But if we add this calcium carbonate this lime at a uh, low low levels it could perhaps seal up cracks and the work we'll be doing up at uh, the Rondo effluent chamber right at the um, head of uh, Rondo Reservoir in the town of Warsing is constructing a small pilot plant with uh, tubes of pipe that will simulate the length of the tunnel between between Rondout Reservoir and West Branch Reservoir, and will run different dosages of lime through that over about a year period to see if this technology actually holds promise to be something that could possibly <coughs> be applied to the tunnel. And uh, we've spoken with State Health Department and Department of Environmental Conservation as well. And we also recognize if, there, if you're adding calcium carbonate to the tunnel up at Rondout, and you're going to be plugging these leaks with that, that that calcium carbonate could also would also enter the groundwater, and we certainly you know we have to consider that part of the equation as well, and the information that the USGS study provides is going to help us in understanding how that could possibly impact the groundwater. But this calcium carbonate already exists, and since there is a limestone formation here in the Warsing Valley. But um, before we get to that point, we want to we want to see with this pilot test that we're on out whether it's feasible. Thank you. Others that believe this Ulster woman from Ulster County wants to speak. Go ahead. Terry Bernardo, Ulster County Legislator. Uh, I think that I had the same reaction when Julianne was uh, explaining about Paul. I think you're brilliant. Uh, your comment when you're speaking that uh, you're so smart and everything you said, but we're still flooding. Um, and, you know, even everything that you say about the, the thing that you're going to do with the lime, that's great. It takes money, and, and that doesn't help these people here. And I have suggested to Ira, I have suggested to you, and Mr. Uh, Strickland, I suggest to you. Uh, I've seen numerous presentations, you know, books, thick studies, and but I've never seen a list of the residents, photos of their homes, mm -hmm. one of your engineers to maybe go out and look at each person's setup individually to help them. You may find that the solution is really simple and could maybe save you money and the state money. Um, but when you don't know who Andy is, when you don't know who Juan is and Julianne, and there's nobody on your staff that they go to, you know, this lady here and, and Tom, you know, sure, in, in the middle of the folks, night, the way. So, I mean. they, they call me and say, I need a sump pump. It's failing, it's failing. And, and then I did call and Ira did get a pump over, but in my opinion, of all the project managers you have, and you have a lot of them, mm. that's costing a lot of money, and there's a lot of studies, and the USGS study was supposed to be done last June. Now it's January, right? Mm. Correct, last June. Adam, <laughs> last June. Um, I would like to see a project manager assigned that oversees the residents. I would be happy to be the project manager. Mm. I've asked uh, Supervisor Distel for a list of the names of the residents. Um, let's put together <coughs> who they are and what their individual and situations Ulster are. Ulster County is collecting those, right, as part of the appraisal process, no? Well, we, we, do, we so. already have that list of all the homeowners in the study area. Um, John O'Rourke, the town engineer, is tracking every single home, um, every single UV system, some mm -hmm. pump. Okay, and, and Joan Ryan, when, when she has a problem, um, does she have a phone number of that project manager that Joan, she could call? Joan and Tom both know to call me, and we have done this numerous times. What happens it's when you're not there? I get the message. You know. Yes, I get the message, and I send and I've sent other people on my staff down to your property um, as soon as we possibly can. It's it's just a helpful suggestion because okay. you can you can stay up there, and you've got very intelligent answers. You're very smart people, and you have a lot of money for a lot of studies. And I'm telling you from the residents' perspective that they're dying. 
Mm -hmm. I watch people that are, are elderly have to roll out big lengths of hoses. They have all of these little systems that they've made up for their individual properties that take the water out of their basement, put it into another hole, transfer it out here, but then they're flooding their neighbors. Neighbors are getting in fights with neighbors because the water is not going away. And there are little things that smart engineers can help these residents do. And I feel like that, that it's a, a disconnect that is not happening. And it's really a no brainer for you guys. I mean, really the, the investment of putting somebody in charge of the residents, dealing with the human aspect of the element of the residents. We have one resident whose husband is going through cancer treatments, and you know, the mold is a constant problem for these residents. Let's get somebody in here to take care of the mold. These are not big expenses in the scheme of things. Could you tell me how much the expense is going to be for the study with the line? Is it more than $100,000? It is. Is it more than $200,000? Yeah. The, the, stud, the study is going to cost us, it's going to cost us a little bit over a million dollars. Okay, so even if we hired a full-time project manager to hold these people's hands 24 hours a day, seven days a week, if we got two or three of them at $60,000 a piece, um, that would not come anywhere near a million dollars. So I think you can see the disparity in money that we're talking about. Um, they, they don't have that. You know, assign an engineer to them to walk their property. Put an above ground septic in for the lady. You know, that, when you, when you start touching the human element, you know, it's very, the, the lack of compassion that's being shown for the human element is, is mind boggling. And, and, you know, when you come out today, um, you know, we haven't had a, a lot of rain, a lot of activity, right. and, um, you know, I would love to sit down with you and watch some of the videos when it's really rocking and rolling and we're worsening because it's bad. And when it's not bad, it doesn't mean that the problem isn't there. Uh, like Julianne said, these people, you know, when you live somewhere, I, I live and I have a lot of deer in my, my, my yard, and I know when they come and I know when they go. And I know when one thing is different. Let me tell you, they know about your tunnel and they know when the water's coming. They know when they're releasing <coughs> it through the tunnel. They're like Indians. They, they know how the land works. And, um, and they know when they're not being helped. Okay. Well, we're going to go to Julian's house. So, you know, in a few minutes, I think there's some other folks who have some questions. I don't know if you do still, sir. Go ahead. <coughs> well, my question um, really is from a, a long range financial impact to uh, the tax base. And that involves the town, the county and the school district that once these properties are purchased um, and demolished, uh, uh, the value of them will be diminished and it will have a long range impact on, on the taxpayers in this area. And, and what is New York City gonna do about it? I mean, is there, is there going to be some way, shape or form where these municipalities are gonna be made whole uh, going forward for the loss of, the, of this tax base? You know, again, I, you know, I, we, uh, hold on, let me get my, my sheet out here. Uh, so if I have that information. We, you know, what we're doing so far, we obviously spent a lot of money, and I don't have the worsening figures at hand, uh, on uh, taxes in the watershed. Uh, you know, globally, I, you know, I can tell you it's $132 million. Um, but we really have to determine, uh, we're going to, be figuring out and looking at uh, our compensation scheme for individual homeowners when the USGS study comes out. And you know, I said a few times, I, I wish it was study was here. I wish we got it in June. I mean, that is, and that is something that we've been talking about at the PAC, and we talked with uh, with Dennis and Art um, and my time as well. Um, the city in the budget for the agreement, um, for as long as the property is on the tax rolls, um, the city will be paying um, Ulster County to cover those tax costs. But you're right. After that period of time, once they come off the tax rolls, um, that's something that we, we have been talking about, but we haven't uh, really come to any any conclusion on it moving moving forward. So I think that's something that we could reevaluate after the USGS report, and then we just put that in, in, in the hopper. Yeah. Point taken. Up. Fair point. Yes, sir. I'm sure, I appreciate uh, the opportunity. I'm, I'm really glad to welcome you to Austin County. Quickly, uh, a couple of things come to mind. One is is that 
Uh, when we look at the buyout program, Ulster County is an implementer of a buyout program from the state. And we're glad that the New York City has saw fit to, to match that money. I heard you mention something called phase two of the buyout program. One of the concerns that we have and continue to have is, is for those folks that want to leave, um, that there is enough money to make sure that we can uh, get them out if they so choose. Uh, so I, I would want to explore phase two with respect to whether or not the city is willing to put additional resources for those that want to leave. I also want to echo uh, Legislator Bernardo's comments, which is, is that it's often that we hear the phrase, think globally, but act locally. In this instance, for those folks that remain uh, and want to remain in their homes, acting locally and finding an advocate within the division, within DEP, to essentially advocate for these folks uh, and to make sure that you understand their problems and can move to, to, to help them individually, I think is an extremely important uh, and critical way in which the city can play a role uh, in terms of trying to deal with this problem throughout this whole area, uh, which has high groundwork. The third thing I want to say is, is that um, for far too long, I think we've had to deal with the, the, the city in terms of its ability to make decisions behind closed doors without bringing the stakeholders into the decision-making process. And we hear things such as the USGS is going to be reevaluated, that report is going to be reevaluated. We'd like a seat at the table as part of, as part of that reevaluation. Uh, we'd like to make sure that the, the alternatives that are chosen and how we look at uh, where the city moves next with respect to that is a, one that's completely transparent. I know that the USGS report is supposed to do that, but we want to make sure that essentially these folks and the county and others have a seat at the table with respect to the evaluation of those reports and what those conclusions mean. Thank you. Well, I'd just like to say, Dennis, the plan is that that's what we have the PAC for. Um, the USGS will come here and the PAC members have asked that they make a presentation to the PAC members first so that they have time to digest it and also help the USGS with their presentation to the public. Because in the past, we've had some presentations that have been very, very long and very, very complicated. We don't give enough time for the understanding part of it all. So that was our, our plan, was to have USGS come in, present their report. It's not a city report. It's their scientific report presented to the PAC in a workshop meeting, and the PAC would uh, discuss all of it, what it means. It's going to take us, um, I would say, many, many hours in conversation to go through that complicated report. There's a lot, there's going to be a lot of science in there that we're all going to have to kind of work through with USGS. So whether we do it in one meeting or three meetings before we have a public presentation, I think that's something that, I know DEP is looking at the PAC to um, advise us on how that information is shared publicly and also what it means. We all need to kind of talk about what this report means. It's not going to be a simple. And I can appreciate that, Iron, but what I would say is, is that it would be helpful if the PAC had its own set of individuals that with credentials that DEP has to review that report so that they can understand what it means with somebody that's working for them. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. I have a statement. Okay. Um, I purchased my house in 2003. That was my husband and I first home. Um, we bought it at a reasonable price, but we sunk about $100,000 into it. Um, a year ago, it was appraised at one price, and we just had an appraisal, and it dropped over $50,000. Now, if we are to walk away, we're going to be in debt, and we're not willing to do that. And um, we had one of the gentlemen come to the house from Ulster County to come and talk to us about the buyout. And he went downstairs, and my husband told me that he was downstairs for no more than two minutes. He took a few pictures and ran upstairs, and my husband had the impression that he was afraid of all the mold. So I, you know, I just want to let you know that, you know, we're not fooling around here. It's bad. It's really bad. <coughs> well, I hope to see it, and I know we are scheduled to leave, so maybe one last question from you, sir, or comment. Your choice. I have a couple comments. Okay. Number one, uh, people, myself included, we're going through this. Discovered in back in the 80s that it was reservoir water coming through the top of the dam 
in your worship. Well, I appreciate it. Tyler, all of us crew, we thank you for what you've done, everybody. It's been 30 years. Now you're asking us to wait 10 more years. I think some of us are getting beyond the physical condition to do what we did 10, 15 years ago. And I think it's time that the tunnel is expedited. The process I know takes time. I worked on that as I said, I know. But I think it needs to be expedited as quick as possible to see if this lake can even be fixed. I don't think the lawn is going to do it. I, I beg to differ with anybody. But the erosion on the outside of that tunnel for this length of time must be enormous. And I don't think lime is going to seal it. And I think, I know it's time that these people here, there's more people, there's some people more need than I am that need to be deep and they need it now. Everything needs to be stepped up an extra speed or two to bring this more about than wait another 10 years. You know, I, I don't know if, uh, I mean, the PAC certainly, you know, knows about, you know, our plans in the World War Scene area, but, um, you know, the line pilot is one aspect of the repair. Um, there's going to be, you know, when, the, when, the wa when it's dewatered, we're going to get in there. We're going to be drilling grout holes. We're going to be, um, you know, grouting, which is a pretty well-established technology, uh, in there uh, and strengthening it with the steel liner. So I don't want you to think that the, the you know, the launch stabilization pilot, uh, you know, is the only thing that we're going to be doing. Okay. Maybe just one final question. Okay. Then uh, then we'll let the same way get in the last lick. So. Okay. Uh, since the since the USGS study, by all accounts, is kind of the holy grail here, I was hoping you could clarify for the residents what New York City's role has been in reviewing initial drafts of that study. Uh, it's my understanding from talking to Fred Stum and his staff that there had been drafts, and in some cases that New York City had actually caught some scientific mistakes in those drafts. And so I was hoping you could explain what role New York City has played in reviewing any initial drafts of the USGS study, and uh, that would be helpful, I think, for the residents too. So before the USGS publishes any publication, uh, they go through a review process. Uh, there's a review process internally in USGS, and uh, in the case, of the, the case of the tunnel, we were also, New York City DEP was given the opportunity to review the draft as it went out to the USGS reviewers. And uh, we provided comments on the draft. Um, it then went out to a wider circulation, the peer review process within USGS. And uh, we haven't received, we haven't received a, a, since we provided our comments, we haven't seen, seen the uh, report. So we're, we don't know how our comments were incorporated. Um, and we'll see those when the final draft comes out with, with everyone else. Gentlemen, Kale. Thanks, I'll be brief, and I want to thank you, first of all, Commissioner, for coming to town. Uh, it's very important that, uh, that we have this opportunity for face-to-face -face, uh, with the residents here. Um, as you know, because I'm sure Paul and Ira and others on the staff have briefed you, sure. the, the negotiations that took place with the state legislature last year were fairly complex and oftentimes very frustrating. Uh, they came to a conclusion largely because we were able to represent that the City of New York and the, and the Department of Environmental Protection was going to step up to the plate and that we were really taking the first step and that this was going to enable a complete solution. Um, I'm going to ask, as I've asked the, you see Chris Ward, Emily Lloyd, mm -hmm. Pat Holloway, yourself, and if I were around back then, I would have asked Waldo Smith uh, uh, to, to remember that we're your neighbors, but we're also your stewards. And uh, treat us as you would treat uh, your customers in New York City. Treat us as you would treat the people in the boroughs. Uh, if there were 
situations that were threatening the foundations of homes, that were making living conditions unlivable and causing health issues uh, with a given neighborhood, and they were the responsibility of the DEP or the responsibility of the Board of Water Supply. There's no question in my mind that you and your agency would step up to the plate and, and make sure that it was addressed as expeditiously as possible. We're looking for a uh, simple solution to a complex problem. It is very complex. As you peel back the layers, mm -hmm. you find another level of complexity. Uh, I'm encouraged by the fact that you're looking at alternative means. I would ask that things be expedited as much as possible, particularly with the buyout, because I think people's health and life are, are at risk in those situations, uh, and to begin to consider what can be done to remediate those who are not going to be bought out uh, as much as possible. I understand the engineering challenges of fixing this line. It wasn't built overnight. It's not going to be fixed overnight. It didn't deteriorate overnight. Uh, but I would ask that it be given priority status and immediate attention in that regard. Uh, I want to close by, first of all, thanking the residents who have been so so good to our office and making sure we had the information we needed to make the case first with my colleagues in the assembly and the senate and then with the governor's office where we've had uh, uh, somewhat more limited success but you know we got something out of them mm -hmm. but also i wanted to thank you and your agency yeah. uh, for for keeping the the door open and i would ask that you continue to do so we will and thank you for those remarks in, in closing because i do want to you know make sure we have time to go visit your house and, and others um that we, we do view, and we, we certainly treat uh, upstate residents at, you know, at least the same as the, we do uh, our in-city residents. I can tell you that there are areas of the city where there's flooding issues. Um, we try to expedite as fast as we can, but often, you know, it, it can take decades to build out sewers there. So, um, you know, we don't like being in that position, but we do, we are in a position to, to ultimately help folks with our, our engineer solutions, and that's what we hope to do here. So I think with, uh, with that, we're going to go to the neighborhood and, 